Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. This podcast is for anyone who has lost their voice and want to get it back. I lost my voice at a very young age, and it took me years of pain and hurt to get it back. On this podcast, I will bring you personal stories that will make you laugh, cry, think, heal, and in some cases, propel you into making new and better choices. At the end of each story, I give you my thoughts and I ask you, pro- I ask you probing questions. No one is perfect and no answer is wrong. So let's get started today, you guys, with my special guest. I am so excited to have Stephanie with me today. Oh my God, when Stephanie and I met, we were like girlfriends. We were just talking and talking and talking and talking because we have so much in common. Um, If you don't know, you should know, I was a cosmetologist and so is Stephanie. Stephanie and I, our backgrounds, really, we have a lot in common. And every time we talk, we were just talking about hair. I mean, literally just talk about hair. I knew exactly what she was saying. She knew exactly what I was saying. So we, oh, I'm so excited to have her here. So Stephanie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I am a cosmetologist. I've been a hairstylist for 24 years and um, that's actively what I do kind of day in and day out to take care of my family. And um, I'm also an author and I've lost a launched a publishing company to launch my own books um, and to publish my own books and also for other authors. So if you're an author out there and you want somebody that's a little out of the box thinking, (laughs) send me an email. Um, And uh, I have five kids and my husband has four. So we have nine together. And um, so we are a busy family and just rocking and rolling here in the hot South right now, it's hot. <laughs> well, it's gotten a little warm here. You know, we're at, you know, I'm on the East coast. So it's, get, it's getting a little warm over here as well. So yeah, it's a little warm. So Stephanie, now I know you listened to my podcast because we talked a little bit and I know there was a lot of stories that you enjoy, but what story resonated with you? What story are we going to talk about today? Um, I really enjoyed and felt like the one that I could relate to a lot was the boyfriend who mistreated me Oh, and the situation with your mom and her boyfriend Yeah, in a very difficult place in your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who haven't um, listened to that story, or if you've listened to it and you've forgotten about the story, basically... I just share with you, there was a um, time in my life when I had to move back in with my mom. Um, I was waiting for my um, apartment to get ready and some things happened. I ended up having to move back in with her. And when I moved back in her, in with her, I was under the impression that her boyfriend knew I was. Well, I found out he was not. And let me tell y'all, that man, he just, he let me know he was not (laughs) happy that I was there. He was slamming pops in the kitchen, turning the TV up loud. I was sleeping on the couch and he would come downstairs and he knew I was there, turned the the TV up loud, bang, bang, bang in the kitchen and all that. And my mom would be upstairs and she never said anything. You know, she never did anything. And one time I was so frustrated. I was like, I can't, I, I need to get some sleep. And I went upstairs and I asked my mom, can I just lay in the bed with you for a little while? And this chick told me no, because <laughs> she was trying to get herself some sleep. So I said, well, listen, let me just lay at the foot of your bed, lady. Let me just set your lay at the foot of your bed. And she was like, sure. But that reminded me of a Bible story. If you all have ever <laughs> listened to the story about um, Naomi and Ruth, Ruth laid at the bottom of Boaz's foot like like Naomi told her to well listen she got the man the man guess what I got I ended back on the couch so (laughs) was so different than mine but well um at the end of the story I share with you you know I appreciated my mom allowing me to stay with her but I didn't like the way she allowed her boyfriend to treat me and then I thought about it I said to myself maybe she didn't say anything because he was mistreating her. And I didn't think about it until later. I was like, you know, 
that's probably why. So if you haven't listened to it, please go and listen to it because that's a story that Stephanie and I are going to talk about today. So Stephanie, what were your thoughts on the story when you heard it? Well, you know, I thought it was so interesting because I could really relate to it. Um, growing up, um, my my father died when I was young and my mom had remarried and um, I left the dinner table so many times crying. My feelings hurt from them being mean to me. They would pick on me. I was the, I was the baby. I was the youngest and they would just pick at me and say mean things and um, kind of bully me. Mm. And so I could really understand how you felt about like your mom not stepping in and saying, Hey, wait, you're not going to talk to her that way. Or, Hey, wait, you know, you don't get to pitch a fit because something's not going your way. Um, and just having that like defense and that protection mechanism, yeah. you know, and like, you kind of expect that with your mom, pretty much at any age, I think you're like, Hey, you brought this person into my life. So you need to set some boundaries around yeah. this relationship. Right. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it about putting up boundaries. Yeah. But do you think that's, you know, with parents, do you feel like parents have boundaries with their children? Yes. With the world, but with their children. Well, they should, if they don't, but they need healthy boundaries. Right. That's so, a good one. So like you were a grown woman and so she could have communicated with you, but also I think communicating with him and saying, look, if you're uncomfortable with this one, I need to know up front or two, now that she's here and I've welcomed her into our home, you and I need to deal with this. You don't need to mistreat her because you're unhappy about something, you know? Yeah. And, and kind of like with me, in my situation with my mom and, and my stepbrother and my stepdad and all of that kind of being mean to me growing up, I always wanted my mom just to say, you know what? Shut up. <laughs> I you love need it. to just shut up. <laughs> and, and I think in, in your situation, had your mom said that one time to him, like, stop, you don't get to do that. It would have helped you feel more connected to her and felt like, okay, she wants me here regardless of whether he wants me here or not. Well, you know, what's so funny is I asked my mom, did she, did he know that I was coming? And she said, no, but she said it was her house. She said, this is uh, my house. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And you know, when I, I look back on the story, I think about my mom and I, I, I learned so much because the way, when you listen to the story, you have the same reaction that most people probably would. But me being in the story, her boyfriend and I got along great. To be perfectly honest with you, before <laughs> I moved in, we got along great. That's why I thought it wasn't going to be a problem. He right. knew me. We laughed and joked all the time. But the problem was, I think, just having someone else in the house, and maybe because my mom didn't tell him that I was moving in. But even in that, I thought it was going to be perfect because we worked during the day. I worked later. So I wasn't there a long period of time. They left earlier in the morning than me. So right. it was only like a couple of hours that we would actually have to see each other. And I thought it, you know, I thought it was going to work out well, but you never really know people until you move in with them That's or so until, you know, you, you just don't know people and how they're going to react and, re and respond. And then I thought about my mom. She probably didn't know how to, because maybe that was her first, well, that probably, that was her first time being in that situation. And yeah. she just didn't know how, maybe she just didn't know how, didn't want to make waves. Right. You know, sometimes That's my mom. Women, yeah, sometimes as women, we don't want to make waves. We don't want to make anybody mad or angry. So yeah. we don't say anything. Yeah. We lose our voice. Yes. We stopped talking. That's yeah. So I mean, that's my mom. Exactly. My mom is a keep the peace mm -hmm. woman. You know, I don't know how she got me. I came out with two pistols loaded, you know, <laughs> <laughs> ready to fight the world. But she is, she is quiet and she's a peacemaker. And so, um, I think it was, 
I mean, she told me later through the years that she had said things, you know, behind closed doors and that they had ar- had arguments about it. And, and probably like in your situation, that was kind of the same thing. Like you just weren't seeing it, but I think sometimes protection um, needs to be seen, you know, like, like going back to talking about the building of boundaries, you know, you have a physical fence for your backyard or for your yard that says, look, these are, this is a physical, you know, representation of my boundaries. And I think sometimes in relationships, it would be really good if people will say, this is my band, like state it out very clearly so that you don't get into those places of where you overstep or cross someone's boundaries and hurt their feelings. Cause like he probably had his feelings hurt because he felt like he was unimportant. You know, he was living there, but he didn't matter enough to have the discussion with. So instead of him handling it maturely, he just pitched it, you know, <laughs> passive aggressively. And then mom's kind of like feeling I'm stuck in the middle. And you're like, what the heck did I walk in on? You know? Well, you know, I'm glad you said it. I never thought it thought about it from his perspective. All I thought about is how I felt. And sure. that's oftentimes how we do. We only go by what we, we felt. Um, I did put the shoe on the other foot when it came to my mom because she, yes. you know, that was my mom. And I'm like, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't mad with my mom. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't mad. mad. I didn't understand. Sure. I, that was my yeah. issue. I didn't understand. I'm like, but we got along. I don't understand what's going on. That was, you know, my thing is more confusion except for that morning when he, that last morning, whoo, when that pot hit that floor, I was like, <laughs> whoo. Oh, I can't take this anymore, you know, (laughs) but you know, it, 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 it really made me think about like one of the things you said about boundaries, how not to allow people to treat you. Yeah. And, but I felt like I didn't have anywhere to go. I was like, my apartment, it'll be ready. But you know what I did? He helped me. He pushed me and I found somewhere else to go was just a couple of days. And then my apartment was ready. Oh, that's so great. I got, you know, I, I, I got out of that, but then I looked back on it and I was like, maybe that was his goal. Maybe he didn't mind me staying there the first couple of days, but when it went into a week or a little bit longer, he was like, look, this chick got to go. I'm going to run her up out of here. <laughs> yeah. And it worked because he ran me up out of, <laughs> out of there. But, that's so funny. So, I know you share some about your mom, but do you have a particular story that's kind of similar to my story? As you know, as far as you know, something that happened to you where you really wish your mom had a spoke up for you, had a protected you. Yeah, um, it was mostly well, there was one night that I had food poisoning. Ooh. I was like 13 years old and I had food poisoning, and I mean, I was sick. Yeah, that's and, not fun. And they made me go to church because I was supposed to get GA badges. Oh, okay. And it was GA stands for girls in action or whatever. It was, you know, you did the kind of like Girl Scouts at the church and you kind of did these little things to get badges. And I ended up throwing up in front of the whole entire congregation. Well, that's good because they shouldn't have made you go. But go ahead. (laughs) I'm sorry. You know, I'm I'm reverting back to when I was a child not speaking. So go ahead. I'm sorry. And and I felt like that should have been that to me was one of those things of putting the wrong priority in place. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I was sick. She knew I was sick. She should have said, hey, we're staying home so you can be sick at home instead of pushing. But my mom had always has a strong sense of duty. Mm-hmm. And so at times duty overrides anything else. And that was embarrassing. I was 13 years old. I mean, that was yeah. traumatically embarrassing for yeah, me for, teen, you know? yeah. for early teen, because you're coming into yourself and yes. it really does matter what other people think and say. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, in that moment, I wish that she had stood up and said, you know, hey, we're just going to take care of you. We see that you're sick, you know, and um, and so that was that was one that has always kind of frustrated me 
throughout yeah. my life. And it wasn't so much that any other person was as involved, but it was the lack of boundaries and recognizing the situation that's happening at hand and creating that safe space, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think as even now that we are adults, um, we want to feel protected, whether it's mm-hmm. through a husband, it's through a, a parent, even though they're older now, you know, your parents are older, you still have that little girl, that little guy inside of you. And you want that protection, even grown yeah. men, you know, they yeah. want to feel protected. You know, something goes wrong, you know, well, I'm speaking from a woman because I'm not a man. I don't know how y'all think because sometimes y'all confuse me. But anyway, <laughs> I could just, you know, you know, I want to feel protected. If I call my dad and I have a problem or a situation, I want to feel like he's either going to step in and say, here, baby girl, let me help you out. Or he's going to give me advice to help me to deal with whatever the situation And even with my mom, you know, sometimes, you know, it's like, sometimes you just want to get that, you know, I got you because I remember this one time my mom had my back to the end and she had her moments. Now that boyfriend, and I think she was learning, my mother was still learning and she was, you know, going through a whole bunch of stuff. But if you put your hands on her daughter, that's it. You can't put yeah. your hands on her children. She going to fight you to the end. I don't care because I was being bullied in school. And when she found out, she called the school and said, listen, if you put your hands, if that bully puts his hand on my child one more time, I'm going to come up to school and put my hands on some people. And you don't want that. <laughs> you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And I felt protected. I was yeah. like, and I didn't want to tell my mom because I, and that's one of my stories. You guys, if you've never listened to it, go back to the story that says being bullied bites. Cause I tell you what happened when I was bullied, but my mom, she was, she, she made me tell her what was going on because she could see something different in me. Every day I came home, you know, I was crying or, or upset. So she made me tell her and immediately she was like, I was like, Oh Lord. Oh my God. <laughs> got on that phone and she started and she made me leave the room because she was about to start cussing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but the next day, I mean, it worked and I felt so protected and I love that feeling. I'm not saying it happened all the time because I think parents make mistakes. My oh, parents absolutely. were not perfect, you know, and yeah, I wish they could have handled situations different. We all do. We wish they would handle certain um, situations differently, but I had to look back. I was like, my mom's human. She is not perfect, you know, but I will say this. And I know you remember this part of the story. I eventually bought me a townhouse and a couple of years later, my mom bought a townhouse and she got rid of that dude. She moved out. Yeah. She was like I had it. And then I <laughs> thought about it. I was like, you know what? I bet you my mom was being smart the whole time. All that stuff was going on. She was probably saving her money. Yeah. You know, cause you know, as women, you know what we can do. We get a thought in our head. I'm leaving this dude. So but yep. let me get myself together first <laughs> and stayed and put up with stuff until she was like, I'm out, you know, so she, true. she got everything in together. And she was like, I've had enough of you. I don't like you anymore. I'm out of here. Yeah. And I was like, yes, when she moved out and she left him, I was like, yes, but I don't know what was going on in her head. I can only go by what, you know, I was, I was right. Saying. But yeah, I, I just think that, let me ask you this as a parent, do you ever think there will be a day where you stop protecting your children? I'm so, um, I'm not a helicopter parent, but I am a super protective parent. Mm. So it's hard for me to imagine. Um, but I have taught my children to be very independent. Okay. So like my children will only call me in when necessary. You know what I mean? Like they kind of know they'll handle it themselves until they can't handle it. I'll give you an example. My daughter had her first boyfriend and they had only been dating like two months and he was trying to force her into saying that she loved him. Oh, and she's 16 years old. And I said, sister, we're not worried about loving anybody. (laughs) I know that's right. (laughs) The the only thing we are worried about right now is what movie are we going to see on Friday night? Yes. 
are we going bowling? You know, <laughs> what what restaurant? Those are the only questions and concerns we have at 16, at 16 while we're dating. Absolutely. Yes. Look, yes, mom. <laughs> yeah. And so um, he just kept kind of pushing her and pushing her. And and the final straw was he told her she couldn't talk to a friend of hers that lives in Texas. And, and because it's a boy. And I said, no, no. And so I went and sat down and told him and I said, look, um, you don't get those privileges. I said, I'm her mother and I'm her authority. She's 16 years old. You are not her authority and you do not get to tell her what she can and can't do, where she can and cannot go, how she can and cannot look. Those are my, that's my territory. Yeah, Mama Bear. <laughs> you protected her cub. I love it. Go ahead. Go. I love this. Go ahead. Thank you. And um, and I said one day you may earn the the right and the privilege to speak into her life that way, but right now you don't have that space. And if you have an issue with her like that, you can come and talk to me about it. And if it's something that I feel like we need to address then we can address it together. But at 16 years old, you're not telling my daughter anything about what she can do. Was he an older guy? Was he older than her? Um, Not much older, just 18. Okay, he has he some was control a senior. issues. In my opinion, he has some control issues. He, and Mama Bear needed to stand in because she didn't recognize that. But hopefully exactly right. when you finish with her, she noticed she will recognize those kinds of traits in people based yes. on him so that was I hopefully that was a learning experience from her because right away I'm like he's trying to force her to say something he got control issues yeah you know, he need to go lay on somebody's couch that's exactly right. go back home talk to his mom and dad and say listen this is what <laughs> happened you know what did I do wrong or, yes. Or whatever. <laughs> yes but I love mama bear going inside listen <laughs> hell what you're not gonna do is talk to my child any kind of way I love that because I know your daughter felt now, you know, at 16 year old, sometimes at 16, sometimes they feel like, oh my gosh, she's embarrassing me. <laughs> but the fact that she came to you and she allowed you to go and says, you know what? My mama knows best in this situation. I need yeah. my mama. Yeah. Hit on mama bear. Thank you. And that, and that was what she said. She was like, this is out of my, I don't know what to do with this. And I didn't know, see, she hadn't told me up until that point that he was kind of being pushy about stuff with her because she okay. was handling it on her own. Okay. Then it came to the point where she was like, I'm in over my head. I need your help. And so I try and give them that space. Okay. But okay. once they tell me I, I'm in over my head and I have to say this for my mom, um, there was one time I had really gotten myself in over my head. Okay. Um, I had moved in with a boy. I was 19, I think. And uh, he broke up with me and um, I couldn't move out. I didn't have anywhere to go. I was a brand new hairstylist, so I had no money. You know, back in the 90s, you didn't get paid hourly for doing commission types of jobs. Wow. You know, they didn't have that. And so I was broke as I could be. and. Um, and I called my mom and I said, you got to get me out of here. And so she rented a moving van and she did. She got me out yeah. the very next day. And, um, and I've never forgotten that because I did. I felt loved. I felt protected. I felt taken care of. Yeah. And that's good. I'm glad that you had moments where you did feel protected because yes. I think it's sad that you go through your whole life and you don't feel protected by a parent or your parents. And I yeah. have to say, you know, I have lots of those moments where I felt protected, but then there was moments that I didn't feel protected. And right. one of the reasons why I wanted to write the story, you know, because I want anyone out there, you know, to know that sometimes people mistreat you, but then sometimes, you know, your parents, they don't know how to handle things and That's to, right. to show that they're not perfect, you know, that they have flaws, you know, because yes. I think oftentimes children put their parents on a pedestal. They don't That's think right. they can do anything wrong. 
you know, <laughs> except so for when they want to use it against them and say, well, when you were a child, when you were 16, you did this and this, that's because it's going to benefit them. But other that's than right. that, sometimes we put them up there high and we just think that they can't do anything wrong. And then when they slip up, we're devastated. You know, we're like, oh my yeah. God, I, you know, so yeah. So let's answer these questions now. We did answer one. We did answer one of the questions already. I prematurely asked that question. And that question was, is there ever a time when you, when your parents stop, is there ever a time when your parents stop protecting you as a child? And we did, we, we talked about that. But then the yeah. other question is, how do you handle people who mistreat you? Like my mother's boyfriend, he mistreated me. And I probably wished I had spoken up for myself and said something to him. I do now, but at the time, I didn't think it was my place. I thought it was my mother's place because it was her boyfriend. Right. So when people mistreat you, how do you handle it? Well, um, that's a loaded question. Let's see. It depends on what area you are. If you're my husband, all logic and reason flies out the window <laughs> and we can get Jerry Springer in 2.5 seconds. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not always very nice, but um, the farther you go out, um, it, it can really just depend. Sometimes I will just, I'll set a really firm boundary in place and I will just remove myself from the situation. Like um, I owned a salon storefront for years and had employees. And there were some times I just had to let people go. Okay. Um, because it, it just wasn't working for a myriad of reasons. But um, so in those situations, like with employees and stuff like that, sometimes you just have to let them go. And it's better for you, better for them, better for your company. Um, setting with, boundaries, like you said. Yes. Yeah, you can no longer do this or you have to go. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and with friends, friends can be a little bit more difficult because yeah. you're close, but you're not like yeah. necess necessarily like related or intimate. Um, so in my situation, I try and find what I call the place of grace with my friends. Oh, I like that. And some things can fall in the place of grace because we all are just jerk faces sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> we true. all have bad moments, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, and then there are some times where behaviors just pass. Like um, you, there are certain roads you can go down with people and there are certain roads you can't go down with people. And if they're going down a road that I can't journey along with them, be it like drugs, alcohol use, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that, then I just have to remove myself. It doesn't mean I don't love you and I don't care about you, but I will keep you at arm's distance. Good. Because you're and treating then, yourself the way you want to be treated. Yeah. Not allowing them to treat you a certain way. Yeah. That's exactly right. And then like with my kids, you know, um, we just try and talk about a lot of stuff. Like, um, I don't wait until just big things happen to sit and talk with my kids. I kind of want to talk with them about all the little things in between as well. So that when we do have big things happen, um, we're able to like mm. walk through and discuss. And years ago I was a yeller. I yelled all the time at my kids. Um, and then my late husband passed away in December of 2019. And my oldest daughter said, mom, we hate that you yell all the time. Ooh. And I said, okay. And I, I had to think about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, then I need you to do what I ask you to do up front. Because if you don't do, if you can't honor my word, if you can't honor what I'm asking you to do, then you leave me no choice but to back into yelling to get you to move, right? So if yelling makes you move, then that's what I resort to. Yeah, but that also is putting responsibility on her for something that you don't like doing. And she's yeah. come to you and she's made you aware of it. And now you're making her aware, aware of the reason behind it then it should squash the situation because I just need to do what mama tell me to do and she won't yell at me. Yes. 
And that works almost all the time. I will say, okay, this is the last time I'm asking you. Next time I'm yelling. And I almost never have to yell at them because they I will. Like they I like will. That because you shown it. them and you told them what you want and expect for them. That is great. You know what? Go ahead on Stephanie, bringing it on in, being a bomb, a mama bear. Listen, I don't want us to run out of time, but I want you to be able to share with everyone about your book and your social media, um, you know, um, social media platforms and all that. So if someone wants to reach you, they can. So yeah. what is, tell us about your book. Uh, my book is called Believing in Boundaries. Um, and it's a biblical based book to help you understand the need for boundaries and establish them for yourselves. So it's not a how-to book because boundaries are so vast, mm -hmm. but I want people to understand that boundaries are God designed and God upheld. And as image bearers for God, that we also need to set in place and hold our boundaries, that it's very important to do so. Yes, I love it. And so um, are you on Facebook, Instagram and all that, or? I am on Facebook. You can find my author page as Stephanie Jordan author. Um, I also have a private group called the Recovering Southerner that you can ask to join. And on the Recovering Southerner on Facebook, I'm all talking about foods primarily. So gluten-free, anti-inflammatory, okay. dairy-free eating. That's um, awesome. I love that. Yeah. I, I really had to get a hold of my health yeah. and um, I'm working on it myself, child. Woo. Yes. Listen, it's a, it's a hard road to go down, but it, some roads you need to go down. It <laughs> is so true. So I and want to make sure all of that is in the description. I have okay. all your information. So I want to make sure that people can get in touch with you and your book and all that. And um, what was the name of the book again? Believing in Boundaries. Boundaries. Believing in Boundaries. Okay, I will make sure. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. I enjoy having you. I know my listeners are going to gain some, some things, especially parents. Oh my God. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for having me. I just, I love your energy and I love your heart. And like, this has just been so much fun for me. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I pray that this episode will make you think about your childhood memories and how they have impacted your life. If you like what you hear, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, or you can email me at valallisonelliot at gmail.com and I'll spell it for you. It is V A L. I-S-O-N-E-L-L-I-O-T at gmail.com. And if you would like to support this podcast, please email me because listen, y'all, it's a lot of work. All right, friends. Thanks for listening.